Hey everyone, welcome to City Kids Online. If this is your first time watching, thanks for being here. Hey, check this out. Joel, where have you been? Well, you said bacon, so I had to go get some. You said something about it being in our Bible story? That was a week ago. You missed the whole thing. I did? Yes, you did. How much bacon did you get anyways? I'm a little worried since it made you lose track of a whole week. I don't know how much. A lot, I guess. <sighs> Joel, the story wasn't even about bacon. Well, I thought you said it was. I did mention it because that maybe played a little part in the story, but it's not what the story was really about. Really? Well, fill me in since I missed it. Well, there was a Roman man named Cornelius who worshiped God. And in a dream, God told him to send for the apostle Peter. Okay. Well, there was a problem. Well, what problem? <laughs> The Jews didn't associate with Romans, but God chose a special way to show Peter that he should go to Cornelius and share about Jesus. So what was the special way? Well, Jews had very strict laws about the kinds of foods they should eat. Certain things like bacon were off limits to the Jews. Seriously? <laughs> That's, That's terrible. Yes, God gave Peter a vision of a big sheet being lowered from heaven with all forbidden fruit on it. God told him to eat. So did he? He did, but not at first. He told God, Lord, I'm not gonna eat anything unclean. But God said to him that he shouldn't call any food unclean that he was giving him. So did this mean the Jews could eat anything they wanted? Well, God was saying that even people who didn't follow Jewish food laws or traditions, they could be saved. The gospel news of Jesus was for everyone. You know, it does make sense that being right with God is not about the food you eat. That's true. It's about Jesus. Speaking of the gospel, we have a new big picture question. What is the gospel? So what is the gospel? Well, the gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. You know, I know I've heard about this before. Mm -hmm. So it also makes me think about the gospels, you know, the first four books of the New Testament. That's a really good point. The gospels are four books in the Bible that tell about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So what happened after Peter had this vision? Well, Peter went to Cornelius's house and he preached about Jesus. So did they eat like bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches together? No, but the Bible tells us that Peter, that while Peter was preaching, the Gentiles or the non-Jews who were there, they believed in Jesus and they were filled with the Holy Spirit just like what happened when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. That's cool. At that time, Jesus' followers were really only telling other Jews about Jesus. I guess that's until God gave Peter the great bacon vision. <laughs> I'm sure there was more than bacon on that sheet. But as for today's story, we're gonna hear about how churches started showing up in other cities away from Jerusalem. Okay, like churches chicken? <laughs> No, not church's chicken, not bacon, nothing to do with food. Okay. These were real churches, but mostly they were made of Jewish believers. However, one church in a city called Antioch was different. Well, how was it different? The church in Antioch was filled with lots of believers who were not Jews. Word of this got back to the church in Jerusalem. Our story today will show that the church in Jer what the church in Jerusalem did uh, when they learned about the Gentile believers. Awesome. Well, all right, kids, are you ready? Watch this. God had called Peter to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they were or where they came from. So Peter shared the gospel not only with Jews, but with Gentiles. The Gentiles mm. in Caesarea heard Peter's mm. message and believed. Ah. God gave his Holy Spirit to these new believers and they were baptized. Ah. Before long, the apostles 
and other believers throughout Judea heard the Gentiles had believed the good news about Jesus. They were surprised, so Peter shared about the vision God had given to him of the sheet of clean and unclean animals and his encounter with Cornelius. Peter explained that the gospel is for all people. Then the believers praised God and understood that Jesus had come for the Gentiles too. At the same time, believers who scattered after Stephen's murder had traveled to places like Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. In those places, the believers only shared the gospel with the Jews. But some believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and preached the gospel to the Greeks too. God was with them, and a large number of the Greeks believed the good news. The church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man. He loved God and was full of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. When Barnabas arrived, he saw that God was gracious to these believers. He was glad and encouraged them to keep following God. Even more people trusted in Jesus. Then Barnabas left Antioch and went to Tarsus to look for Paul. Mm -hmm. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch for a year, teaching large groups of people. Jesus' followers were first called Christians at Antioch. Even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and help them know and love Jesus more. It's pretty amazing that the word Christian yep. started in Antioch. That's right. These new believers in Antioch were called Christians. You know, and I like how the church in Jerusalem responded when they heard about Antioch. Well, how so? Well, they sent Barnabas to help them. Yes, they did. Barnabas was a great man of God, and I'm sure he brought the church in Antioch great encouragement and strength. You know, Barnabas did even more than just bring encouragement. He went and got Paul to help too. That's right. When the people give their lives to Jesus, we want to encourage them and help them in their growth as Christians. You know, as far as growing goes, mm -hmm. I know the Bible is really important. Do we have a new verse from last week? We did. Our verse is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 31. It says, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nation the Lord reigns. And what about motions? Yeah, we have some, here they go. They're pretty easy. Let me show them to you since you okay. were here last week. They go like this. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell the nations the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16, 31. Well, I can see how the good news of Jesus is for everyone, and we want to encourage and help new believers grow. That's right. When people come to Jesus, we should be ready to celebrate that, encourage them, and help them grow in their faith. Hey, thanks again for watching today, and don't forget to check out the activities on our website at citypointchurch.com slash citykids. Hey, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at castile at citypointchurch.com. Have a great week. See you later.